over a million years, lions have ruled the African savanna. They sit at the top of the food chain. Because with their tremendous power, superior leaping ability, and extraordinary teamwork, lions aren't afraid to take on anything. The lion, king of the beasts. It's mid-September in East Africa. The dry season. These 12 adult lions and six cubs live together in a pride. An extended family that stays and hunts together for life. This season is particularly hot and dry. And much of the lion's prey is beginning to migrate to greener pastures. Which means fewer hunting opportunities. Each lion needs over five kilograms of meat a day. About 8,000 calories. And with fewer chances at a meal, this pride can't afford a botched hunt. But taking down an animal five times their size is not going to be easy. The buffalo present challenges. They're hyper alert to danger. Sleeping only an hour a night rarely more than a couple minutes at a time. A buffalo's sharp horns can span one meter and they can easily kill a lion. And buffalo protect their own. Smaller and weaker members stay in the middle of the herd with mostly males forming a protective ring around the perimeter. So in order to succeed against buffalo or other prey, a lion needs to employ teamwork and strategy. A lioness can catch a buffalo, but they can't bring it down by themselves. On the other side, a lioness could certainly eat a gazelle, but it can't catch a gazelle. It's not fast enough. So he's got this really tough. You need friends. You need friends. If these lions are going to share a meal of buffalo, each of them has to play its position well. Some are faster. They're able to run down the animal quicker. Some have the power and they're a better animal for grabbing the muzzle of an animal or taking them down. Certain lions will find that they're more apt for doing certain challenges. The hunt begins when two flushers charge the herd forcing it into a panicked run. Then one of the pride's two strikers assesses the situation. She scans the herd, deciding which animal to target. She's looking for weaknesses, singling out the
This roar from afar is a sound that spells trouble. The kind of trouble that could change this pride forever. An intruder is approaching. But he's not interested in stealing their buffalo carcass. He's come to challenge the resident male and take over the pride. It's been a couple of years since the resident male was himself the challenger. Like most males, his mane started to grow, and he reached sexual maturity at the age of two. He was then thrown out of the pride he was born into. This serves an evolutionary purpose. Since he's related to all the females in his pride, he must leave in order to mate. But as a teenager, he wasn't strong enough to depose a resident male. So he roamed for more than a year, waiting for his moment to take over a pride. Two years ago, he did. Now, from the sound of the distant roar, the shoe is on the other foot. Personally, I've heard of lions roaring from six miles away. And when you realize how far away, it's like, God, but they seem so close. A lion's roar isn't just heard, it's felt. It begins when muscles between his ribs work like bellows pushing air at 80 kilometers per hour over massive vocal folds, causing them to vibrate. But what gives the roar its power is the speaker cabinet between the roof of the mouth and the back of the throat. The sound resonates here, increasing in speed and intensity. And in this speaker cabinet, the lion can also manipulate his roar's pitch the way an opera singer changes a note. The result is a sound that can reach 115 decibels, as loud as a rock concert. Another roar comes, from much closer this time. A series of staccato grunts with clear beginnings and endings, which make the roaring lion easy to locate. The name of the game is intimidation. I don't think they'd rather kill each other. They don't want to get hurt either, because they know if they get wounded, they're pretty much stuffed. Now, both resident and challenger have a choice. Fight or flee. But it's no longer that simple. Suddenly, he sees that he's not just facing one lion, but two. One intruder attacks the male. The second intruder threatens the pride. The resident male injures his paw. And finally, falls on his back in a gesture of submission.
his pride, and the territory are no longer his. The more dominant of the two challengers becomes the new leader. And as he takes power, things take a brutal turn. He kills all the cubs. It seems very cruel, but basically he's just wanting to end the kingdom of this former male to start his own reign. He's assuring that these are his kids, his genes that are being passed on to the next generation. If the new leader can stay with the pride long enough for his cubs to reach adulthood, his genetic line will continue. And though the females may initially resist the new resident male's efforts, at 225 kilograms, he weighs over 30% more than they do. But killing the cubs also serves another purpose. It will actually put the lionesses into heat. The years of stability in this pride are gone in a heartbeat. The new resident male leads them out on the hunt with something to prove. Today, they won't be hunting buffalo but something far more substantial. This prey is over five meters tall and weighs 1,800 kilograms, with legs taller than a lion's entire body. Its kick can kill in one blow. I've seen a giraffe give a sideways kick and you hear the crack from a hundred yards away. He caved his head in. If they're going to take down something that big, the males are going to have to join the hunt. There's no rule of thumb that say males don't hunt. Uh, they do. I've seen them actually going after giraffe. And that's a big animal. You need a lot of friends for that one. You need the weight to bring this beast down. A giraffe isn't just big and strong. It's fast and agile, too. So the pride will need a unique strategy to succeed. They'll have to set a trap. Three lionesses have herded this giraffe into a grove of acacia trees, where the rest of the pride is waiting. The giraffe is surrounded on three sides by the trees. And the lions are sealing off the fourth side. With nowhere to go, the giraffe begins to panic. And the lions just wait for the perfect moment to strike. with an entire pride on him. This giraffe has no intention of going down easy. And it takes nearly an hour to kill it.
while the pride feasts on giraffe. Less than two kilometers away, the ousted male wanders alone on the savanna, getting hungrier. His paw is injured. And worse yet, everywhere he goes is another pride's territory. There could be three or four prides setting up territory within you know, this 10 to 20 mile radius. And the only chance that he has at that point is just to try to stay undercover, make as little noise as possible, and just keep running until you get out of that pride's territory. He's used to being stealthy to stalk his prey. But now, he must keep a low profile to avoid being preyed upon. Four days ago, he took in almost 30,000 calories. But expending more than 10,000 calories a day, he's got little left in the reserve. In the blink of an eye, everything about his life has changed. Getting hungrier, he's reduced to prowling like a hyena. Meanwhile, his former pride takes its time with such a huge meal. The more than a million calories could sustain them for 10 days. If only they could eat the entire giraffe in one meal. The lions will eat 40 pounds of meat and just gorge themselves. They'll go wander off and get a drink of water from the nearest watering hole and then crash out for the next 18 hours. When they wake up, hyenas have taken the carcass and had a feast of their own. The giraffe could have lasted them more than a week. Instead, they'll be hunting the next evening. When the sun is down, it's cooler on the savanna. But it's not comfort driving lions to hunt at night. It's strategy. A hundred yards away at nighttime, we probably wouldn't even be able to see that there's an animal there. But a lion could probably even see the animal breathing. Buffalo have very limited night vision.
they risk sending themselves down an irreversible path towards starvation. But with the Impala's tremendous acceleration, one of the Pride's flushers simply can't catch it. A second flusher can't either. But just when it looks like the Impala will escape, the Pride's fastest lion, one of its strikers, springs perfectly right at the Impala's neck. All this might seem like a lucky break, but the whole chase was carefully planned. The first lioness's goal isn't to catch the Impala, but to direct its course. When the second lioness lunges, it's to steer the Impala straight towards the third lioness, who times her lunge perfectly. Each lioness nets about 4,200 calories. But the kill comes at a price. The lioness who made it, the pride's fastest striker, injures her leg. And in the wild, even something like a small external wound can be worse than it looks. She's also suffered an internal injury in captivity, the average lifespan of a lion is up to 30 years. But in the wild, it's only 15 years. Three days later, the pride striker is dead. There's no time to mourn. The fastest young lioness takes her place. But for this pride's former leader, playing alone in a team sport, there's no such backup. He's only got himself. He may survive for a while, eating scraps or picking up whatever he can. It's been two weeks since the old lion was thrown out of the pride he ruled for two years. Since then, things have gone from bad to worse. In his heyday, the lionesses in his pride provided him with virtually all the meat he could eat. Without their help, now at a deficit of more than 50,000 calories, he's lost more than six kilograms. His body is feeding on itself. If he's gone a long time without eating, you also got to think he hasn't had any moisture either. Lions get most of their water from the prey that they catch. So he's extremely dehydrated, and at this point, he's in a weakened state. But the scent of a buffalo dying by a watering hole represents another chance at survival. Maybe his last chance. It's 550 kilograms of flesh. And with no other predators in sight, it's uncontested flesh. A buffalo this size could save his life. If he can only manage...
wolves to feed. This pride can no longer afford to hunt small game. They have to go for whatever is in their path, no matter how dangerous. At 320 kilograms, a zebra is more than 15 times the size of the gazelle the pride last shared. One zebra could feed them all and feed them well. But zebras are dangerous because they're so powerful. For the lioness who tries to take one, any mistake could spell disaster. A zebra has strong legs and a deadly kick, powerful enough to blind or even kill a lion if it connects. Anytime you go after a zebra, you're really, really putting your life in danger. I mean, severely. And it doesn't take a mortal wound. It takes just a heavy bruise, a broken foot, a smashed jaw, a broken back, and you're going to be high in the lunch within 24 hours. To make matters worse, with top speeds of up to 65 kilometers per hour, a strong zebra can often outrun a lion. And the only lions in this pride who can catch them are the two strikers. They hold while one of the pride's flushers disperses the herd. The veteran striker explodes. But the untested younger striker just watches and hangs passively back. Why was this attack unsuccessful? It turns out that one of the biggest problems catching a zebra is seeing a zebra. Lions are colorblind. They have trouble distinguishing between the zebra's monochromatic vertical stripes and the tall green grass of the savanna. And it was just enough to throw the striker off target. Without a precise leap onto the zebra's back, she has no hope of wrestling it to the ground. This spells disaster for the pride. If their number one striker can't take a zebra, it's highly unlikely the rookie can. The pride moves off, but the rookie stays right where she is. She's learned something from the other striker's miss. She positions herself where there's no tall grass between her and the zebra. Then she takes off. But if she's going to take this zebra down, she'll need a perfect leap and a perfect landing. A lioness is capable of leaping 10 meters, but to do so, all aspects of her anatomy need to work in perfect harmony. First, she'll need to be at the peak of her stride. She'll need extraordinary traction from her rear paws, 
which plant into ground moving by her at an amazing 17 meters per second. Her fore and back legs extend in perfect unison, triggering a spring-like explosion in her spine. The combination gives her the aerodynamics necessary to fly through the air. She latches onto her prey, tumbling with it until it falls. Each claw independently adjusts to the zebra's movements as it struggles. Finally, she clamps her jaws around the zebra's neck, squeezing at 425 kilograms of force and cutting off the zebra's flow of oxygen. After she subdues her prey, the pride's two males move in to feed. Soon, they all get their share. It took a week for the rookie to step into her role as one of their two strikers. But when the chips were down, she saved the pride. They all gorge on the 320 kilogram zebra until each of its members can hardly move. Their former leader can also hardly move. But for another reason. He hasn't eaten in three weeks and has lost more than 27 kilograms. He is dehydrated and covered in lesions. A feast for the insects that are his only companions. It's a cruel and lonely end for the exiled king. But it's the same fate suffered by the male he deposed, as well as what awaits the males who deposed him, too. In a few months, the new resident male's cubs are born. Someday, if they're lucky, they'll grow up to lead prides of their own. Just like someday they'll be challenged by younger males for those prides. Such is life on the savannah.